Nancy lived in a small house, located almost at the very edge of the forest. At first, the young widow was afraid to be alone in it, but then she got used to the difficulties such life entailed and started feeling rather comfortable. There was no sound of cars driving by or other noises that big cities have. Since the house was located on the outskirts, Nancy didn't have any neighbors either. Her mornings were filled with sounds of birds singing, and the evenings were spent listening to the crackling of cicadas. Despite the fact that the forest was within easy reach, Nancy rarely went beyond the edge because she was afraid of wolves and other large animals. Her husband Mitchell died six months ago in a car accident caused by an icy road. Winter in Maine is often harsh, so the locals know to be extremely careful at this time of year. Unfortunately, it was only after her husband's funeral that Nancy found out that she was pregnant. The news came as such a shock to the young woman that she didn't know whether to be happy or sad. Having lost her husband, Nancy was left all alone with her heartache, which seemed to intensify with each passing day. The situation was further complicated by terrible morning sickness, which became an integral part of the young woman's life. Nancy's evenings seemed to be identical, consisting mainly of tears she shed for the late Michael. Looking at her husband's photograph in a black frame, the woman simply couldn't hold back her tears. At moments like these, Nancy was willing to give up everything she had, only to have Michael by her side. At first, it was very difficult for Nancy to live alone in the house by the forest, but the young widow didn't fall apart and stoically endured all the trials. Nancy's friends have long advised her to get a dog for safety reasons, but the young woman didn't feel like it. However, as Nancy was on her way home from work one day, she heard a strange whining sound coming from the roadside bushes. Nancy stopped and paused for a second, and then stepped closer to see what it was. Having carefully parted the bushes, the woman saw a tiny puppy. She was shivering from the cold and moving her muzzle from side to side. How did you get here, you poor fellow? Nancy whispered. The dog barked loudly as if answering the woman's question, and the hairs on his back stood on end. Wow, you're a brave boy, aren't you? Nancy smiled and carefully picked up the puppy. Feeling the warmth of the woman's hands, the puppy immediately calmed down and licked her finger as if to express his gratitude. That was when Nancy knew that she was going to keep the puppy. Having let the little guest into her house, the woman watched him inspect every corner, getting acquainted with his new home. Nancy named the puppy Spike after the famous cartoon character. Now, when she came home from work, the woman knew that she would be greeted by the excited yapping of the puppy, who missed his owner very much. These moments made Nancy's life more tolerable and even allowed her to forget that she had recently lost her husband, at least for a little bit. Working in the city library, the woman saved every dollar she could so that she would have something to live on after the birth of her child. Of course, the woman knew that she wouldn't be able to save up enough to provide for herself and the child for the rest of her life. But on the other hand, having some savings is always a good idea. That July morning, Nancy left home later than usual. It was Spike's fault. He ran out into the garden and kept barking towards the forest for a long time. Darling, that's enough already. There's no one there, except for squirrels and black grouse. And now it's time for me to go to work. Nancy said, picking up the puppy and taking him back inside. If the young widow could have only known that three pairs of eyes were closely watching her from the forest at that very moment. Meanwhile, Nancy locked the puppy in the house and hurried off towards the nearest bus stop. The men sitting in the bushes exchanged meaningful glances, and the eldest of them said, So what, shall we take a rest in this shack? I think this pregnant fool went off to work and we need to get food and medicine. I don't think that's a good idea, Fred. There's a dog in that house. The youngest of their group objected cautiously. His words caused the third man to chuckle. So what, do you think a dog can stop us? Let alone a puppy. Don't worry, Billy. After robbing the cash and transit van, breaking and entering will seem like a kid's game to you. The young man named Billy refrained from arguing and chose to simply trust the words of his more experienced accomplices. 
they were all prisoners who had escaped from the state county jail a week ago. Fred was the oldest and the most experienced among them. He was serving time for a first-degree murder. Tom was Fred's right hand and was just as bad as his mentor. Billy was the only one who wasn't a hardened criminal and ended up in prison by pure accident. He was forced to go on the run by his cellmates, who threatened to make him regret it if he didn't. Having escaped from prison, Fred, Tom, and Billy masterfully pulled off a large-scale robbery that immediately made them millionaires. Unable to use the money they stole, the fugitives wandered throughout the forest for three days until they came across Nancy's house. Unfortunately, Tom injured his leg when they were crossing a stream, so he urgently needed medicine, which the fugitives simply couldn't buy. Nevertheless, Billy was against breaking and entering into Nancy's house. Having seen the woman with his own eyes, the young man experienced an inexplicable surge of sympathy for her, which for some reason made him feel hopeful. Fred quickly broke open the front door, looking around furtively. He was the first one to enter the house. He was followed by Billy, who immediately tried to calm Spike down, since the dog was barking loudly and desperately trying to protect his home. The first thing Tom did was check the fridge, hoping to find something to eat. Imagine his surprise when he discovered that all the food Nancy had was a carton of milk and some crackers. What kind of person has an empty fridge? Who is this woman? Some beggar? The man exclaimed in surprise. It looks like there's no money here, and no medicine too, just some iodine and aspirin, Fred added without hiding his disappointment. Billy only shrugged in response, still holding little Spike in his arms. The young man had always loved and didn't want the other men to harm the puppy. Unlike the other two, Billy didn't want to search the house and simply went from room to room studying the furniture of the owner's personal items. Suddenly, he spotted the photograph in the black frame standing on the bedside table. It pictured a handsome man of about 30 whose eyes literally radiated kindness and tenderness. That's probably that pregnant woman's late husband flashed through Billy's head. At that moment, the puzzle pieces came together in the young fugitive's mind. He understood why the pregnant woman was so poor and why she lived in an old house near the forest. Dear God, she's a widow, Billy whispered, and felt even worse about breaking into the young woman's house. Billy had about $7,000 in his pocket. It was part of his share of the stolen money, which each of the men took on the run with them. The rest of the money was buried in the forest. No one knew the location of the stash, except for the three robbers. Fred was smart about it. He knew that they wouldn't be able to get far with bags full of money, so they decided to hide them until better times. Billy took another look at the picture of the man in the morning frame and started quickly putting the money from his pockets into the desk drawer. Little Spike watched the fugitive hide the cash with curiosity in his little eyes. Driven by his instinct, Billy couldn't really understand why he was doing it. The man realized that they wouldn't be able to get far, which meant that his money wouldn't be useful to him anyway. On the other hand, they could help the pregnant woman, who was going to become a mother in a couple of months. Having put the money in the drawer, Billy winked at Spike and patted him on the withers. What's taking you so long? We need to leave before the woman returns, Fred said, sounding annoyed. Billy sighed sadly and hurried after his accomplices. Sly as a fox, Fred tried to cover their tracks to make sure their pursuers wouldn't be able to find them. But the fugitives couldn't have known that the search party was led by an experienced sheriff who had caught at least 30 fugitives during his service. Fred, Tom, and Billy were detained outside of the city during an attempt to cross the state lines. Since the police had long known about the fugitives' adventures out of jail, all three of them got their terms increased by five years. Thus, due to an unfortunate turn of events, Billy had to spend a total of seven years behind bars. A lot had changed in the lives of the three men in that time. Tom got pneumonia and died in the prison hospital, and Fred died during a fight between two prison gangs. Thus, by the time of his release from prison, Billy was the only one who knew where the money was hidden. But the truth was that he really didn't care about all the money he had now. 
Billy spent his years in prison, dreaming of meeting the woman whose house they had broken into seven years ago. The ex-con didn't even know if his money helped the pregnant widow or not. Although, deep down, he believed that what he did helped restore the pregnant woman's faith and miracles. Having gotten out of jail, Billy immediately went to the same forest where he easily found the stash. Having put the money in a huge backpack, he decided to visit the woman who lived at the edge of the forest. The ex-con's heart was literally jumping out of his chest as he approached Nancy's house. But that wasn't due to the heavy load he was carrying, but because of the excitement he was feeling for the upcoming meeting. Having arrived at the house, Billy saw a boy of about seven years playing in the yard. Good afternoon, sir. The kid greeted the guest immediately. Billy nodded shyly and knocked on the door. Soon he heard quiet footsteps coming from the other side of the door, and then there was Nancy. She looked just as pretty as she did seven years ago when Billy watched her from the dense thickets. Spike was standing next to the woman and wagging his tail. He must have recognized Billy. During the time the man spent in prison, the puppy grew up and turned into a beautiful adult dog. Nancy looked at Spike in surprise and couldn't believe her eyes. She knew that Spike was an excellent watchdog and was always hostile towards strangers. Without saying a word, Billy leaned over and patted the dog on the withers. Nancy couldn't help but tear up as she watched the two of them. At some point, she realized what was happening, and this sad man with the huge backpack was probably the mysterious benefactor who left her several thousands of dollars in the desk drawer. It was you, wasn't it? Seven years ago, Nancy was the first one to break the silence. Billy blushed and lowered his eyes. Then, having overcome his initial agitation, he said, Yes, ma'am, it was me. The expression on the man's face made it obvious that admitting the truth was hard for him. Meanwhile, Nancy decided not to waste time and invited the stranger into the house where she started setting the table to feed the man, tired from the road. The money that Billy had left her was just enough for Nancy to take care of her newborn son without having to worry about working for at least some time. All this time, Nancy kept mentally thanking the mysterious stranger who helped her and her son, Simon. Billy wasn't counting on getting such a warm welcome. The man was deeply surprised by the woman's hospitality and the fact that she didn't hold a grudge against him for breaking into her home. Having agreed to stay at Nancy's house for a couple of days, the man ended up staying there forever. Billy had long dreamed of having a family of his own, and therefore he surrounded Nancy and Simon with care and love from the first days of their life together. The ex-con renovated the house and built a farm, which started bringing the family a stable profit in just six months. Looking lovingly at her husband, Nancy believed that they would be able to stay happy together for many years to come.